Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good, I'm great. Planting up my porch urns. Pardon the mess and everything, been repotting a lot of things out here. So what I'm going to do with these, these are going on my front porch, like I think I just said. My front porch typically has always gotten a decent amount of shade, gets morning sun, afternoon shade, and there's a huge Japanese maple that was a big part of it getting a lot of shade, but that died last winter or sometime in the mix of last summer to this past winter. I don't know if it was like Versillum rot, root wrap, something like that. I don't know what happened, but it's gone. So I'm a little bit befuddled as to what to do with my front porch planters this year. So I've decided to kind of do a little bit of a mixture of plants that like sun and shade. I'm thinking about throwing some banana trees up there. I'm like, let's just have some fun this year. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these up and then talk about what's in them. The plants are a little bit sad from being divided up and everything, but overall, looking good. It's gonna adjust well. It's gonna need a little bit of time, but they'll be fine. There is something missing here. I had planned on using these um, Sweet Caroline Sweet Potato Vines, the Bewitched, Green with Envy Bewitched, I think is what they're called. I was gonna have those just spilling over the front and not even have anything coming over the other sides with these spider plants over here. But with the emblem on the front of the pot, I kinda didn't wanna cover that up. Although those spider plants are gonna cover that up eventually anyways. Yeah, I have an idea. Oh, just remembered these guys. Not the impatience. I just remembered when I potted these up in that vlog not too long ago. Also, pardon the background sound. It's the, the dolphins, they can be kind of loud. So when I potted these windmill palms up in a, a vlog or two ago from this video, I had uh, extra labilia and I went ahead and I put two in the fronts of them instead of just one. And I just, I forgot. I forgot that I got them to use with those planters on the front porch. Don't mind if I do, I'm gonna take that. And then in place of those lobelias, I put these Sweet Caroline Bewitched Green with Envy Sweet Potato Vines, cause they'll like about the same sun that these other guys are getting. They might want a little bit more, but they should be okay. Sweet Potato Vines, they're pretty versatile. That's better, I'll go ahead and use these out front now. Uh, the nozzle fell off my hose here, so that's just kinda got a little stream here. Not ideal, but it works for now. Now, the banana in the back is a super dwarf cavendish. It's a Musa acumenita. They are not going to get very big at all. Maybe might get another foot tall, if even. And then below to the right of that is an Alakaja fry deck, which had a lot of peat moss around its roots, which retains too much moisture for the setup I'm doing out here. So I went ahead and I pulled as much of that out as I could. I water all these with drip, and I just, I don't think that it would have been a good match with everything else. It would have held on to too much moisture, wouldn't have done well. Over to the left, Thai plant, Cordelin fruticosa. Beautiful variegated foliage, some yellow, some green, hints of pink in there, just kind of provides a pop of color. Oh, and I should point out there's white powder on a lot of my plants. That's because I just went a little bit nutty last night with the DE powder in my backyard. Just there have been gnats and things just everywhere drive me crazy. So that's what that's about. I tried to rinse a lot of it off, but there's still a little bit residual on there. And I also think it'd probably be wise to come in here and um, spread some slug and snail bait just because there were some slugs on this alakasha. And then there's the sun impatient in the front and the purple labilia just below that, which I just watered. So, you know, sad looking. And then these spider plants on each side of the lobelia. These spider plants, they're kind of going to throw a fit for a little bit. I had them in hanging baskets, just one hanging basket, actually one that I did last fall when I divided my other one up. And I went ahead and divided that up to put on each side here. 
I like the variegation. I like its fullness. It kind of gives them instant gratification, though they're a little bit wilty and sad. They'll bounce back very quickly. Everything out here is going to get about five to six hours of morning sun. The Alakaja Fry Deck might be a little bit sensitive to that. However, the past couple of weeks, or really like three and a half to four weeks, I've had my Fry Decks in my backyard acclimating to a decent amount of sun like they were getting way more sun in the backyard than they're going to get out here so because of that i think they should be just fine the bananas are going to be on the lower end of the spectrum as far as lighting goes but they should be fine the sun really does wondrous things as long as they get roughly i'd say minimum five hours shouldn't be an issue even though bananas are full sun plants as long as they're getting the nutrients they need through fertilization and nice and rich soil not a big deal. But if you're growing them to get them to fruit, they definitely would need to be on the higher end of sun. These impatience, man, they just look terrible. They were the only like big ones I could find, these sun impatience. They'll fill back out. They'll have a nice kind of mounded shape to them over the front of everything, and they'll be okay. That mounded shape is going to look really pretty. The lobelia should, before the impatience starts to like really get intrusive, should start to come over the front, so it'll be getting light there. And that's the other thing I like about the lobelia, is it's not likely to trail so heavily that it's going to come down and cover the front of the pot, which is a little bit irrelevant, because like I said, I'm pretty sure these spider plants will do a good job of filling out and probably covering everything up as it is. These sun impatients are so reflective, it's really hard to get their true color to show on camera or even to focus but they're like a coral pink color these are faded flowers there are some more fresh flowers down here that look on my viewfinder kind of orange but they're they're more on the pink end than on the orange end if i had had to mess with these impatience too much like really tear at their roots to get them in there then i could go through with my pruners and cut those about really halfway and even maybe just leave like a third so two thirds which will encourage more growth from the inside and get a nice bushy plant the sun impatience are so resilient that i don't really think i'm going to need to do that i'm just gonna be like hey you know what i'm gonna give them a couple weeks and it'll be fine hey tobes hey toby yeah, good boy, Toby. <laughs> Still need to replant these hosta boots. The irrigation in my front is broken right now, which is one of the reasons I haven't done a ton of planting yet so far this season is because uh, everything needs to be fixed. There's a leak somewhere. With these being on drip, I don't see any problems there. I just need to go ahead. I need to reset my timers and get it set up. This is just the start. Just getting things going. Still more planters to do to put out here. And actually, I need to get going on my hanging baskets need to do that soon too. They get kind of shaded by these pillars here, so I'm thinking I'm probably going to be going with like begonias and maybe just regular impatience. I mean, that's the direction I need to go since those are the plants I've already picked out for the baskets. Like I said, I'll be keeping an eye on the fry deck. If it does get too much sun, then I'll just pull it out. It's not a big deal and swap it out with a different alakaja or kalakaja, just something that can take a little bit more sunlight. The fry decks they can go part sun outdoors in the heat it's more afternoon sun that i'm concerned about which it's not going to be getting and with the drip that can make a really big difference too and i do expect these bananas to throw up pups they already have some very very are you gonna excuse me you can kind of see there are some tiny offsets some offshoots coming up there which was one of the reasons i didn't put anything in the back of these even though i kind of wanted to uh, so i have a place to access to come with a sharp knife to cut those out if they get too big i mean i let them get big enough so that if i cut them out i can replant them somewhere else but i do really kind of like the solitary look of just having the one banana in the middle which isn't really the nature of a banana not a musa banana anyways maybe an inset but not a musa they like to spread and put up lots of babies <laughs> The dump truck just came through and backed its way down the street. It seems extremely dramatic. They totally could have made it around the circle. Easily distracted. So basically what I've been trying to get at is since I'm not totally certain of my lighting situation with this Japanese maple being gone, I know that's going to get at least five hours up here but it's going to be morning sun, so I did kind of mix things together. And so it'll do well in the part sun to part shade, and then the banana, which would like full sun, but it'll be just fine over here for just a few months in the sh I mean, it's not shade. It'd be five to six hours of sun. Part in the... I've been working on plumbing things over here. And the other thing I like about using this sort of arrangement here is that in the fall time, I can go ahead and pull everything out and just toss it into another planter to overwinter it inside. I won't bother doing that with the impatience and the lobelia. I'll cut that out, but everything else I'll be able to keep together. They overwinter pretty easily inside. And it's time to do that. We'll talk about it. Look how sad my poor boots are, you poor guys. I didn't know the drip wasn't running until, like, well, really this morning. 
so that's my next project, putting away the hoses and getting a new timer and everything rigged up. I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out while I throw together some planters. I'll be making sure to post updates on these as they progress, fill out, start to sort of take form to how they should look. That'll all be up on my Instagram and then future garden tours, <laughs> which I have on my social media link down below in the description. I am on Instagram more than anything else. You can hit me up on there. Say hi. I love seeing everybody's pictures and talking to everybody. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the channel and for the videos. I appreciate it. So thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What do you guys th think about the fried eggs? I like the fried egg a lot, but there's also something about it that kind of bores me. The foliage is dramatic, yet very simple at the same time, which I like, but it also bores me a little bit. But I do, it has a really pretty like velvety texture to it. The veining and the contrast is really cool. And as far as a la to overwinter indoors go, they're pretty good. They seem to be a little bit less fussy when it comes to moving them into the house and keeping them as a house plant. At least that's been my experience. I haven't had to fuss with the fried act much at all. It just sort of like is happy and does its thing. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great time, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.